continuing our trip from Amish country, driving on the mostly scenic US 30 West, approximately 60 miles south to Gettysburg. Once in Gettysburg, we found this great campground right off the highway. We chose Drummer Boy Camping Resort. It combines the countryside of Gettysburg and the Civil War battlefields with many amenities. There's a 95 acre of wooded campsites and rental units, over 400 sites available. And the camp store, you'll find some groceries, ice cream novelties, battlefield inspired souvenirs as well as RV and camping supplies and a snack bar heated pool cabins cottages a daily shuttle service to Gettysburg Town Center within minutes of the battlefield tours the ghost walks and uh, of course the visitor center come along with us see all the historic sites in the town on the outskirts where battles occurred and monuments are erected today. Of course everybody knows Gettysburg is known for the Battle of Fort in July 1863. It was a Union victory that stopped Confederate General Robert E. Lee's second invasion of the North. More than 50,000 men fell during the three-day battle making it the bloodiest battle of the American Civil War. A scale of suffering never seen before or since on American soil. According to many historians, Gettysburg was the turning point of the American Civil War. It was the Confederacy's best chance to achieve victory. It breathed new life into the Union War effort. The battle forever transformed the town of Gettysburg. The monuments of the battlefields are mostly located within the National Military Park. Others are on private land at battle sites in and around Gettysburg. Together, they represent one of the largest collections of outdoor sculpture in the world. We're approaching the National Military Park to the right, where all the graves are of the unknown statues and monuments to north and south. And this is also where President Lincoln gave the Gettysburg Address speech. To the left is the uh, visitor center and parking behind it. And to the right is the entrance to the National Park. This monument in the cemetery commemorates the Gettysburg Address given by Abraham Lincoln. There's many stories of courage and suffering. I'd like to tell one of them about this gravestone and the two pictures laying on the grass. Humanston served in the Union Army and was killed in action during the American Civil War on the Gettysburg battlefield. Dying with his children's image in his hand and that his wife had mailed to him months earlier a local girl found the image and Dr. John Francis Bournes saw it at the girl's father's tavern and subsequently publicized the image. While wounded, he had laid himself down to die. In his hands was an embryotype containing the portraits of three small children, two boys and a girl, nine, seven, and five years of age. The doctor made sure that all newspapers in the area and in the whole country actually publicized a copy of the picture. And that should draw attention and may come into possession of someone that maybe the family knows. Well, Humanston's wife in Portville, New York, who hadn't received a letter from her husband since the Battle of Gettysburg, responded to the photograph's description, she confirmed the image. Bournes took the original image to Humanston's widow. Instantly, she now knew that her husband was dead. But the grave now has his name, 
instead of being unknown. The story is much longer and much more interesting than the short version I just gave. If you're interested, you should look it up. Soldiers National Monument at the center of the National Cemetery. We continue towards the town. It's Lincoln's uh, Train Museum. We had lunch at Lincoln's Diner, which is right across the street from the Gettysburg uh, train station, which happens to be the train station where Mr. Lincoln arrived when he gave the Gettysburg address. David Wills, the lawyer who invited Lincoln to make a few appropriate remarks at the dedication, offered his in his own wife's bedroom in their home on the town square. It was in this room that Lincoln put the final touches on the Gettysburg address. Another historical place is Jenny Wade's house. She happens to be the only civilian that died at Gettysburg during the three-day battle. Jenny Wade had nearly finished knitting the dough for biscuits when a bullet had penetrated two doors, one into her back and through her heart. A memorial dedicated to Jenny. National Civil War Wax Museum this is one of the oldest attractions here in Gettysburg, the Wax Museum, which uh, reenacts some of the battles and scenes during the Gettysburg Battle and other historical scenes. Let's take a ride and see some of the monuments along the battlefields and on private properties. Battery G, 1st New York, Artillery Monument at the Peach Orchard. Third Pennsylvania Cavalry Monument. Alabama Memorial. Monument to the Soldiers and Sailors of the Confederacy. Approaching the statue of Major General William Wells, a Union commander at Plum Run Valley. Little Round Top, 12th and 44th New York Infantry Monument. Union General Brigadier Warren at Little Round Top. Major General Abner Doubleday. Eternal Light Peace Memorial. Battery L, 1st New York Light Artillery. A North Carolina Monument. State of North Carolina Monument. Mississippi Memorial. The Spirit Triumphant, the Louisiana Memorial. The State of Virginia Monument. Statue of Lee above the Virginia Monument. Pennsylvania Memorial. General Henry Warner Slocum. Pennsylvania Cavalry Memorial. Now for the big question. Was the American Civil War worth it? Was it about slavery? Or was it about economics, taxation, political period. The question ultimately is whether anything is worth that kind of slaughter. The only other war in which Americans participated with a cause comparably was the Second World War in which we lost 418,500 dead. Soldiers in the 1860s didn't wear dog tags. The burial site of most was unknown and casualty records were sketchy and often lost. Those tallying the dead in the late 19th century rely on estimates and assumptions to arrive at a figure 
of 618,000, a toll that seemed hedged in stone until just a few years ago. With recent studies, census, records, to revise the toll upward by 20% to an estimated 750,000. This horrific toll doesn't include the more than half a million soldiers who were wounded and often permanently disabled by amputation or lingering disease, psychological trauma and other afflictions. Again, was it worth it?